Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. There are several proverbs about the wind. One that may be hundreds of years old is used by fishermen. goes like this. Wind from the west, fish bite the best. Wind from the east, fish bite the least. Wind from the north, do not go forth. Wind from the south, blows bait in their mouth. Not really sure I understand all that. A proverb from China speaks of winds bringing change for a better world. When the winds of change blow, some people build walls and others build windmills. Confucius gives us this proverb. The green reed which bends in the wind is stronger than the mighty oak which breaks in a storm. There are similar parables in the Bible concerning wind, like Proverbs 11.29, which says, Whoever troubles his own household will inherit the wind. Or from Ecclesiastes, Everything was meaningless, a chasing after the wind. We are spending this week after the drenching rains and floods of Hurricane Debbie looking at storms and weather phenomena in the Bible and the impact they had as part of the Bible's story. We have looked already at the rains that flooded the whole earth in the time of Noah, and yesterday we considered the hailstorm that was one of the ten plagues in Egypt and then God appearing in something like a storm as the Ten Commandments were given. Today, we want to change things up a bit and focus on wind. Maybe before we dig in, we need to be clear about something. Wind direction is described by the direction it blows from, not the direction it blows to. So an east wind comes from the east, and so on. The Bible often mentions wind coming from one direction or another. There are verses that speak of the west wind, and this was a very welcome wind. On hot summer days, the air over land would heat up from the heat in the ground, causing the air to rise. Then cooler air from the Mediterranean would flow in with a refreshing drop in temperature. This wind was also welcome in the ref- in the threshing grain since they built their threshing houses to catch this wind to blow away the chaff. In other places, the Bible speaks of the north wind, and the, when the, if the north wind blew, it often brought rain. It can also bring cold. The Bible also speaks of a south wind, and that usually wasn't good. South of Israel is desert land, and so if a south wind was blowing, it meant hot weather. In Job 37, for example, is the passage, You who swelter in your clothes when the land lies hushed under the south wind. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus complains that people can't discern the times of what God is doing in him by saying, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say it's going to rain, and it does. And when the south wind blows, you say it's going to be hot, and it is. East winds are mentioned, but were somewhat unusual, and when they came, they were generally quite fierce. These winds were especially destructive and were dangerous, particularly to boats on the Sea of Galilee. When Jesus stills the storm on the Sea of Galilee, it may have been an east wind blowing. With Hurricane Debbie, we had a lot of rain, but we seem to have dodged most of the severe winds that usually accompany hurricanes. There is at least one story in the Bible that speaks of destructive winds which might compare to a hurricane or a tornado. The story of Job imagines Satan making the argument that Job's faith in God was because Job had been blessed. Satan suggests that if Job were afflicted with troubles, he would lose his faith and trust in God. So, 
God allows Satan to afflict Job with all sorts of things, and one of those is found in the very first chapter. There is actually a series of calamities for Job. First, a messenger arrives to say that an enemy has attacked, killed Job's servants who were working in the field, and carried off all his donkeys and oxen. The messenger says that he alone survived to tell the tale. As he finished his message, another messenger arrives to say that fire fell from the heavens and consumed all the sheep and servants tending to them, and he alone had survived to tell of it. Before he was finished, another arrived to say that a different enemy had stolen all of Job's camels and killed his servants, and the messenger alone had escaped to relate the story. Then, as he finished speaking, a fourth messenger arrived and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and a great wind came across the desert, struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they are dead. I alone have escaped to tell you. Of all the calamities, this one caused by the wind was clearly the worst. After all this, Job gets up, tears his clothes in mourning, and makes the statement that we all have heard and know. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. But here's the thing. We usually stop with that part of the verse to comfort ourselves in the midst of our own calamities. But Job does not stop there. The fullness of what he says is this. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You see, Job isn't being stoic about his plight or thinking in a fatalistic or helpless way. Rather, in the face of his profound despair, he is throwing himself fully into trusting God all the more. As you may have heard me say many times, you never know God is all you need until God is all you have. God is all Job has at this point, and he leans into that even more, trusting in God as his only help. When the stormy winds of our lives blow, we are not left bereft. Never forget, we belong to God. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.